Oh, look at the man before us. Oh, yeah. I'm Jerry Putnam. I'm uh, chairman of the board of Brickland International Owners Club. For those of you who have never heard or have seen of a Brickland, the Brickland was an exotic sports car that was produced by an American company with factories in Canada in 1974 and 1975. During the course of its production, uh, the, the company produced approximately 2,900 cars. Of those, 775 of those were 1974 models. Uh, the remainder, except for 16 of them, were 1975 models, and those remaining 16 were 1976 models. The company was placed into receivership by the Canadian government, who was the prime financial backer for the company, in late September of 1975. Brickland International Owners Club was formed uh, in late 75 to answer the need of Brickland owners who needed a contact point for the service and the maintenance on these vehicles since uh, there was no longer a dealer organization or service organization in existence. Our club has been in existence now since 1975. Uh, we have members throughout the United States, Canada, and Europe, and uh, of the 2,900 cars which Brickland produced, our club can probably account for approximately maybe 1,000 to 1,100 of those cars. The car itself was produced by Malcolm Brickland, and uh, if that name sounds familiar over the years, he's been involved since this in various entrepreneurial activities, among those being the importation of what was the Fiat X19 and the 2000 Spider, and recently uh, his, his latest venture was in the importation of the Yugo, which uh, is kind of on its decline now, but uh, this car was built out of a uh, dream that he had and uh, was designed basically as a safety vehicle and a very economical sports car. When I say safety vehicle, uh, the car itself is designed with uh, impact bumpers in both front and rear, which uh, at the time the car was produced exceeded the federal standards for for impact speed. Uh, the car is built on a very heavy uh, box steel frame. Uh, the passenger compartment is surrounded in a roll cage and the passengers actually sit down inside the frame so that any collisions from front or rear or from the side, uh, the danger of, of uh, injury is, is greatly reduced. The structure of the car uh, is basically fiberglass but over that, the company put a layer of acrylic plastic, which was uh, color impregnated. Uh, and uh, as such, there are no, there is no paint, I should say, on the car itself. Uh, this acrylic plastic was vacuum formed over the fiberglass panel. And uh, the car, as you see it, this particular one right here, which is mine, is original uh, with the white acrylic. Uh, it requires no painting requires some waxing for touch. Um, the technology that was used to build this car really is no longer in existence. All of the frames and uh, all of the uh, presses that were used to produce the body panels were destroyed when the factory went into receivership. Uh, spare parts are still available from suppliers. In fact, uh, George Byers, who owns several auto dealerships down in Columbus, Ohio, was part of a liquidation uh, company that bought out the remnants of the Brickland factory when it went into receivership. So up until a year or so ago, when uh, a lot of those parts were were removed, the main source of parts for the car was in uh, Columbus, Ohio. Today there are two major service organizations, or two service facilities for the car, one of them being just outside of of Detroit in Brighton, Michigan, and the other one being outside of Roanoke, Virginia. Uh, there are replacement panels available for the car. Uh, parts and service is available for the car. Uh, and many of the cars right now are reaching that, that point in time where they are having to go through both minor and major restoration. Original selling price on the car back in, in 1975, original sticker price was just under $10,000. Now, when you compare to what comparable cars would, would sell for today, 
that was quite, uh, compared to today's car prices, that's, that's quite uh, a reasonable price. Uh, at that time, that's probably equivalent to what a new Corvette would sell for. Uh, cars on the market today, average price uh, is in the range, uh, picking one up used, in the range of fifteen to $17,000, although there have been examples that have sold for an excess of twenty-four dollars and $25,000. Uh, interest in the car is beginning to peak, but being as rare as it is, uh, very few cars are known on the market, in the collector marketplace and so forth. And even today, when they come out, as we see them here today, uh, they still attract a lot of attention because of their unique design, uh, what, what the car means, and, uh, and, and its rarity. So now that we've been able to give you a little bit of background of the car, what we'd like to do is take you around and show you some close-up features of the car, the body, the interior, the engines, and so forth. And to do so, uh, we are going to have Mr. Herb Ball, who is the, uh, the membership director for Brooklyn International, and who is also the local regional director for our club, and Mr. Jim Fout, who is our host here uh, today in Kenton, and have them show you specific features of the car and uh, give you some close-up aspects and let you see what the Brickland is really all about. Covered some important points for you, but uh, the Brickland is strictly a two-seater. Uh, what you see here is actually stock as it came out of the factory. Uh, the doors uh, have been adapted to an air door kit, which uh, is operated merely by pushing this little button here. What do I unlock it for you? Originally, they were a uh, Ford Mustang uh, hydraulic uh, convertible top situation that worked very slowly. Uh, they came in five colors, white, suntan, safety orange, safety red, and in white, or green, I'm sorry. And uh, they're just a thrill to drive. Uh, you don't see very many of them around, of course. And uh, we have cars here from Michigan and Ohio and New York and Michigan. And uh, there's about 420 people in the club. AMC 360 four barrel engine uh, that they produced about uh, 700 of them. And uh, it's stock. Uh, of course, it's a V8. And you can see the way it's squeezed in there. They've used every available spot that they could. Uh, the cars came completely equipped. Air conditioning, uh, tilt, steering wheel, uh, everything but a cigarette lighter. And uh, Jerry Putnam's uh, 1975, mine was a 74. And this has the Windsor 350 two barrel in it. Uh, once again, it's stock. And uh, we tend to try to keep them uh, looking brand new because we have things like our hog roast today and uh, we try to judge them and uh, pick out the good, better, or best ones. We feel that the car, when you look at them, they're 15 years old at least. And uh, certainly it speaks well of the principle, the idea, uh, behind the car. As far as safety is concerned, after all it is, it is titled an SV1, which means safety vehicle one, and uh, the bumpers are hydraulically loaded, so they take an impact of about 25 miles an hour. Uh, there is a rollover cage in this part of the body both front and rear, that's made out of 1 8 inch steel plates, about an inch thick. Uh, when you sit down in the car, you're actually sitting in the frame, which is a 3 by 5 inch channel, steel. Uh, the gas tank is embedded or framed in that, in that chassis. Uh, 
the doors weigh about 80 some pounds because they have a steel waffle in the lower part of the door to protect from a side collision. So all in all, it is a very safe automobile. To the best of our knowledge, nobody has ever been killed in a Brickman automobile. All right, uh, I'm going to touch on some of the high points of the interior and exterior of the cars. Uh, this type of dash is the original factory equipment. So is the steering wheel, and if you'll note the radio uh, just above the console, that's the way they were made at the factory. This particular car is what they call safety orange. The acrylic finish on it is what they uh, depicted for their orange. Uh, the one next to it here is uh, sun safety suntan. Uh, when we get around to the other side of the car, I'll show you uh, what we have remanufactured and what we can do with the dashes and the radios for that. Uh, this car is safety suntan. This particular one has a African zebra wood dash inlay put over it, and you can notice there is shows no radio in the dash. What has been done is a cockpit stereo has been added, and it is embedded in the headliner up on the roof of the car in the interior. That other little thing happens to be my uh, radar detector because I usually end up driving too fast in a car like this. This particular car is Safety Suntan and happens to be number uh, 2856. The uh, last car made was 2857, so I like to call this one uh, the next to the last one made, but second to none. It's good for a few arguments. Uh, everybody has their own way of personalizing their car. This one has some pinstriping on it, but it is a fine, splendid example. This one's called Seagull by the license plate. It belongs to Herb Ball. Uh, it's a fine example of an all-white acrylic car. The other two colors that you haven't seen yet are the safety red and the safety green. And we do have a red one we can show you next. Uh, the safety red that most people would probably call orange. I have a problem with it but that is what they had for their safety red. And the only car we don't have here is the uh, safety green. Uh, if you ever had a pack of M&Ms, dump out the green one. And that's the same color. Just take this car and paint it M&M green and you'll have a green Brickland. Uh, 75, uh, I'm the original owner of it. And uh, I was looking for something that was uh, different. And I was kind of I didn't like the Corvettes, but it seemed like everybody had a Corvette, so I wanted something a little unusual. And uh, I've seen one of these I had to have. Uh, uh, of course, the doors and that, you know, sold me. And the fiberglass, the acrylic plastic, all the unique things in it. But the big, one of the main things was because it's got a uh, Ford drivetrain. So I knew if anything ever goes wrong with the car, the ever go out of business, I could always get this equipment. So in fact, after I bought it, I said, now nah, I hope they go out of business. I knew it would make it rare that way. But anyways, I've had it, and uh, I've got 32,000 miles on it. Mechanically, I uh, don't have any trouble with it. Uh, just a pleasure. This is a 74 uh, four-speed Brickland, uh, car number 759, and all the uh, first 800 cars were built with AMC engines, of which Approximately 200 of them had four-speed transmissions. The four-speed transmission is fairly unique in that they uh, had a hard time building them. So you don't see many, and, and they're very popular by the Brickland owners, and a lot of them want the four-speed car. Um, I'm pleased that I've got one. I've owned it since new, and I've, uh, I'll probably never sell the car but it's a pleasure to drive uh, for me. I like it better than the automatic. Um, but I've had two white Bricklands since they were new, a 74 and a 75. And um, I founded the Brickland Owners of Michigan in 1975 uh, as the first club in the United States. And that club's still going on. We still have about 30 or 40 members up in and uh, 
we became a chapter of the National Club in 1980, and uh, it's been a, a very popular uh, group of events to go to. We all enjoy a common interest, of course, in the preservation of the car. This, uh, this particular car has uh, been a driven car. It's got about 78,000 miles on it. And I don't drive it in the winter, obviously, but uh, it's never really had any major work done on it uh, other than when I originally bought it. Uh, all the Bricklands needed certain updates and improvements when they were purchased. But in my opinion, they're one of the best automobiles ever built. My name's Roy Knowles. This is my car. I bought it. I have a date on here. It's a 5-13-75. I got that same month, end of the month. So I've had it ever since it was made. Uh, it's been a good car to me. Let's see, well, I put seat covers on to protect it. And the seats are tearing, getting dirty. Long club ever since I've had the car. It's been real. There ain't no cracks in it. Like you don't have any stress cracks or anything in it. Like you use a lot of them have for some reason. Maybe because it's only got 17,000 miles on it. <laughs> Might be the good reason. Round three here. Break the jinx.